we have to reduce this the um, um, outer to inner edges. What I'm going to do, and here's how I'd recommend doing it, I only want to do motions in increments of two. Because when I do that, I'm keeping my centers, my edges rather, within 180 degrees of where they need to be. And I'm telling you this will save time. You don't have to do this way. You could move in increments of one as you're reducing these. I wouldn't recommend it, and it's not too hard not to. So here's how I can kind of quickly reduce that. I see an outer red, and this will coincide with this inner red, so we're good. How about these two? Well, do we have an inner orange here? on the bottom, or do we have an inner yellow? We have it over here. The algorithm that I use to move this is within this orbit. All I'm going to do is, if this is within this orbit here or here, I'm going to just do the algorithm if it's on the right side, and I guess if this is up, then I'll do R I B R B I. Now what that'll uh, do is it's going to move what was here to here, but do it again, and that'll eventually move this to here. R I B I R B. So now we have that here. So if it's here, just one algorithm will move it here. If it's here, two algorithms will flip it up over to here. So now what I do is I go one, two, this is in, and this is in. So same thing, I'll follow suit here. Do I have an orange? Yeah, I've got an inner orange here. So on the uh, left side, it's exactly the opposite. L. Um, B I L I B and do it again L B I L I B and there it is over here and we have a nice reciprocal how about here this is a blue and white here's a white that can match with this so R R I B R B I just one time we'll move it over here so we go one two now these three are in so we continue to do so. Blue and red, do I have anything that can coincide with that? Here's this right over here. Now it's the same thing, as long as it's here or here, if I keep doing it enough times, this will eventually come into here. That's one, that's two, and that's three. So we're good. How about here? Well, these we want to bump out, so let's just put this in. Okay, now let's put one just opposite here. Here's a yellow and red. This will fit nicely here. And one, two. Good, good, good. So bit by bit, step by step. All right, red and orange. What do we have here? Okay, here's a red here. Red inner one here, so same thing. So we're good over here. Now let's go ahead and randomly put something that can be of use which is here. Yellow and blue, do I have something that can be used? Orange and blue, rather. And, yeah, this blue over here. It's in the right plane, so I just keep doing it. Now, to those who've seen my White Eden puzzle uh, with the two circles, it's exactly the same. As a matter of fact, this has become a White Eden puzzle with two circles. It's exactly the same methodology. Two, good, good. Now we've got these two orange and yellow. If I don't, oh, actually, okay, I've got this here. I want this to move all the way down here. So how do I do that? Well, it is within the plane, so I'm going to go one, two, two, move it in, one, two, move it back. Um, so now it's here. So we're good here, a nice inverse, white and green. And let's see, here's a green that'll work. And now, one, two, good, good, good. Here we go. Blue and white, what do we got here? Do we have any white inners? I've got this one over here. So, how am I gonna get this to here? Well, here's my recommendation. What I'd recommend is, is just start doing that algorithm to shift it around. So if I, if I do it once, let's go ahead and do it once, it is gonna affect the position of this. Even though it was here, now that I did that algorithm, it's now somewhere else. Let's find it. It's now over here. So it went from here to here. 
And then from here, I don't even know if that was the same one. Well, whatever. Anyway, so we've got this over here. So I'll go one, two, up, one, two, back. And now I keep going with it. So this will find a nice home over here. What do we have over here? Anything that we can put in here? Yeah, let's flip this over here. Now I have a nice inverse here. Maybe what I should do is try to bring this to here and it's possible to do that. So let's bat this out again. Okay, now we're over here. So I'm gonna turn it over here and just do the algorithm which will change this position. And as you can see, it put it back here. So one, two, bang, one, two, bang. So now that's here. Um, just kind of play with it. Just because it's not in the same plane doesn't mean that when you do the algorithm, you don't shift it around to put it in the same plane. All roads will eventually lead to home. So now this, let's put this one over here. Orange and white. Do we have an orange and white that I can use? And no, nothing that I can easily access. So what I want to do is, is I don't want to ruin anything. We can either put an orange one or a white one that's already in. Here's a white one because at least it'll match up with this. Okay, now we go one, two. These two are in. This just flipped over here, and now we've got this over here. Okay, how about this? This to coincide to here. So how am I going to do that? Well, let's go ahead and do the algorithm on this side to just bat it out somewhere else. Okay, now it's here. Now that it's here, let's turn it over here, do the algorithm here, which will take this and bat it to here. And there it is. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I did not memorize that. It's something that I've discovered as I'm doing it. So you just gotta play around with it. One, two, this brings it to here. One, two, and bring it back. Now this is within spit distance. So there it is. And let's bring this up here. All right, orange and green. Do I have an orange, do I have a green? Yeah, there's this. Okay, one, two, good, good. Now these two. Any inverses? Yeah, let's move this. Actually, we do have, nope, we don't, okay. Orange, orange. So I want to move this guy to here, here. So I go one, two, it's here. One, two, move it back. We're good over here. How about a white and blue? Yep, a nice inverse here. So that's in. Bang, bang, good, good, good. Now we have this guy. And we have one more left, this inverse over here. It's within the right plane. Now the last, the reduction of the last two corners is easy. I don't want to mess these up, so either I'm going to put a white one here or a blue one here. Here's a blue here. Okay, very good. One, two, and we're done. We have it reduced. So the next part of this is basically the same thing as a wood eaten uh, cube. This is like a normal cube. These are uh, non-bandaged. These are bandaged. I have to make sure that I don't do turns like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna do my layer by layer solve, and I'm gonna pick a side. And that side can't be the bandaged sides. So I'm just gonna pick red. It has to be one other one. Now this is where the strategy of doing the two comes in. What I'm gonna do is get my cross. The first part of the cross is I'm gonna do it with the sides that are bandaged so that I can minimize that motion. So red and green, where's red and green? right here. Now watch how easy it is for me to do this. I can move it with this side because I'm not going to bump anything out as long as I don't do this move or, move or this move. These are these moves are off limits. So this is a 3 by 3 solve just using these moves here. So bring it in over here and now I can move this up. So I've got this in place. The red and blue. Now trust me if I didn't if I did this a different way just by doing one, when I was reducing these, this would be a lot more complicated. So I have to move this to here. I can't move it in like this. So instead what I'm gonna do is let's bump this out and I can move this in here, but 
I have to move, uh, I have to coordinate it with this towards just opposite. So I'm going to move this down, move this across so that these are opposite, and then bump this in. So this is the hardest part of the cross. Now this becomes my top layer, and I'm going to do the rest of the cross. Notice these are always going to be within 180 degrees of where they need to be, just because of how I did the solution. So I'm going to take this, double turn it here, whoop, see, made the mistake, I can't do that. So instead of that, I'm going to actually move this across like here, move this in, and then double turn it. So I'm just coordinating things. Being careful not to move the, the danger layers. Okay, the final red right over here. Move it here, and now I can just move it here. So I've got my cross. Corners are done by RIDIRDs, but not with this, with this. Let's see how we can coordinate uh, that in. So red, green, and white goes right up here. Don't want to move it like that, right? So just move it across here. And as long as we're wary of which sides not to move, we'll get it. Again, I welcome you to use strategy with this. I'm not Again, I'm not going to go over algorithms. There's no need. See, I almost did it again. So I have to be sure to move it like this. And eventually you'll move it in. I suspect this wasn't really the hard part that was giving people a lot of trouble. So I'm just coordinating the corners. Again, just being very careful to turn only the ones that won't give me any trouble. Bang. Okay, so here's my first layer. So, the middle layer. This is also where the strategy pays off. Now you know that there's an algorithm that moves what needs to be moved from here to here, but I can't because eventually I'm going to have to do these moves, which I can't. So, I'll, I'll say the algorithm as I'm doing it, but honestly I don't have it memorized. It's pretty instinctual the way you're looking at it, but, but I'll say it just in case. This needs to move down here. What you want to do is you want to put to the right side and to the left side your non-bandaged centers because you don't want to be doing this at all or this at all. The way to do it is hold it so that this is just across from where it needs to be and on the left side what you're going to do is you're going to move this up to a LI and then what you're going to do is you're going to do a 2U because you're batting this around 2 and I'll do an L which brings this up here. Once you've done that, you're going to do a UI, which puts this back here, and then you're going to do a LI. You're now going to try to coordinate this with this, and you're going to do that by doing a 2U, and I'll bring it up with a LI. And this will 100% of the time be coordinated with each other. Now do a 2U to bring it here, move this up to an LI, move this in, and go to an L. And there it is here. So let's try another one. I'll do all the non-oranges. Here's white and blue. Okay. Now this will be the same thing from here to here. Going through that again, see if you can visualize what I'm doing. That's going to be L to U LI UI L to U Li to U Li Ui L. I'm going slow because I don't have that memorized. Uh, let's see what else. How about here? Okay, this is the right side. So the right side is going to be very similar, pretty much the same, but on the right side. So let's see if we can visualize that. This is going to be R to U R I U. R to U R I to U R U I R I something like that. Anyway, there it is over here. And now this to here, same thing, more right sided practice. R to U R I U R to U R I to U R, U, I, R, I. So you have your middle layer. We're almost home, almost there. 
by this by you know just how it's going to work you're always you're already going to have your cross here and now we can move this in the same way with with the last step of a three by three do we have two in somewhere we should i think yeah so we got the green and the white so hold the green in front white to the right or whichever two you have do you i r u r i u r two u r i one two u will take you to where you have your cross. Now we have to be careful because now we have to move corners in. Find co a corner that's actually in where it needs to be. If you don't find any, then we do our permutation of the corners algorithm, being careful not to move here or here. So you have to hold it like this. And it's the same algorithm. And that's gonna be U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. All I did was this move, this move, and this move. We stayed out of the danger range. Anything in? Uh, this one. So normally we'd hold it here and do the same algorithm, but we can't. So what I'm going to do is still hold it here and understand that this is where I want it to be. I'm going to do a U. I'm, I'm going to hold it here and do the same algorithm flipping these around. Bang. Bang. Zoom. Zoom. Pow. Pow. Splat. Splat. Now let's move this back and see how everything is. This is in. This is in, this is in, and this is in. So these are exactly where they need to be. I just need to do my R, I, D, I, R, Ds. I'm obviously not going to do it here. I'm going to start from here and do it just like this. R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D. That's good. Move it on down. You know the words. Sing along. Good. Here, 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 here. And last but not least, easily and effortlessly, you will be able to solve your Saturn 3x3. Super cute. So I hope this clarified some of the unclear issues with the last time. From time to time, um, if there's any questions, I don't mind doing reboots. I'll tell you that among the puzzles that I probably won't do a lot of rebooting is the crazy Megaming series. And that's because I actually don't have individual puzzles for that. I've only got two and I do some modding and swapping to create the different planets. It's kind of labor intensive. I put them through a lot of abuse and they're pretty long solves. So that one I may be hesitant to do. But among the cubes, that's not as much of a problem. Let me know if there's any other specific questions. I hope I clarified that last layer. If not, well, you can always do more. Thanks for watching.